Today on Racer TV, it's time to park your motorcycle and leave that racing four-wheeler in the shed as well. Because today at Racer TV, we're not talking about dirt bikes or sport quads. Heck, we're not even going to cover the utility machines either. No, in today's episode of Racer TV, we're going to profile a completely different form of machine that many will tell you are more fun than the motorcycles or the ATVs. We're talking about UTVs, ultimate terrain vehicles, side-by-sides. And for the last three years, we've been racing them in the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Series. And today, it's time for their close-up. Jason Wigan, of course, your host for Racer TV. And we're going to profile some of the top drivers, top co-drivers, and top machines in the 2011 GNCC UTV Side-by-Side -side Tour. This year's six-race championship tour run on the same trails that the motorcycles and ATVs tackle, has proven once and for all, the UTVs are truly race ready. And how did this whole deal get started? Let's talk to some of the drivers. Back when I was racing in the pro class in 2008, you know, we were just doing the UTV thing as you know, kind of a side gig, just for fun and for a little extra publicity. And, and it was so much fun and so competitive at that, that we just, we kind of got hooked. Actually, one of the guys that worked for me bought a UTV and, uh, they said, "Come, you know, we always rode bikes and four wheelers and so on and so forth." And he said, uh, "He said, why don't you try one of these UTVs?" So we went riding and rode rode with it on a uh, one Sunday, and the next week we were at our first race racing them, and that was four years ago. And uh, since then, then we ran into we raced a few local races and went to uh, went to the first national and, and competed against William, you know, throughout the years because you know he was the man and so on and so forth. I bought a a Can-Am Commander from a dealer, and uh, I figured I was going to all the races, so I'd, the side-by-sides look really fun. So um, we started in Georgia, broke a tie rod. Um, it was a good time. Then uh, the next race, we ended up podium them on a stock Commander, and uh, um, I kind of talked to Simon a little bit. I uh, got to know him from Can-Am. Then the next race, we ended up winning on a stock Can-Am Commander. I uh, had nothing done to it. So then I talked to the Warner guys and uh, they said I could ride their machine for the rest of the year. I started uh, racing in 06 uh, for Can-Am and I uh, started in the lights class on the, on the Can-Am 500 and then went to the uh, U2 class on the Renegade 800 XXC. And uh, you know, did that for a few years and loved it. Uh, but you know, kind of uh, in the background, you know, really had a passion for the side-by-side uh, -side racing and and was excited to, to work with Can-Am to, to get the uh, Commander up and going. Yes, much of this form of competition is relatively new, but yet some of it very familiar. Just like the other classes of GNCC racing, we divide the machines up by their engine size. And just like the other GNCC classes, this is true side-by-side, wheel-to-wheel racing. Start off with your competitors on the starting line and race for one hour. Whoever can get to the finish line first, wins the race. As far as the classes go, we'll start out with a limited class for these machines under 750 cc. Traditionally, these are the Yamaha Rhino based entries, like this Team Faith Fly Racing Yamaha grabbing the whole shot here. A little less power, a little bit less suspension, but for the old school Rhino fans, definitely a place you can have some fun. And speaking of fun, speaking of old school, we have the single seat class for those who have kept rust free Honda Pilots in their garage for the last 20 years. But the big class, that's the open division. We divide those up for machines over 750 cc, those with limited modifications, and those with unlimited modifications. The Coastal Racing National Guard team are big players there. Last year, uh, in the, we're in the GNC series, uh, Scott Kiger with Coastal Drilling and myself, we were we were going neck and neck for the championship, and uh, we became buddies during the you know year of racing the UTVs, and got to talking out in uh, Washington where we just bumped into each other one day and uh, talking about how cool it'd be to partner up, go out racing, and have some fun, and that's just what we did. So uh, Yokely Racing and Coastal Racing just uh, emerged and joined forces and brought on the National Guard, Polaris Industries, and a lot of other good sponsors as well. And, and we've teamed up, and uh, Scott and Coastal Drilling has been a huge asset for, for my race program, and uh, it's been a great partnership. We've been doing a lot of UTV racing this, this year and uh, plan on continuing that on next year. So well, what are you going to do next year? And I said, well, you know, we're going to continue to race and, and so on and so forth. So, and we talked about going out west to, to run some different series and back here. And 
so on and so forth. And uh, we, me and William just kind of became friends and started putting a team together, and it worked because I didn't. What I do for a living didn't didn't allow me the time to to put in it. You needed to have a team. Where William had that, you know, that's what he does for a living, and it, it, it give him the opportunity to to expand his deal as well as help me. Uh, you know, with the testing and, and so on and so forth. So from that side, you know, and then we, we and William, if you can't get along with William, it's kind of hard not to get along with anybody, so. Well, certainly there are some fun-loving personalities in this game, but that doesn't mean they're not going to get aggressive when it's time to go racing. Stay tuned for more UTV coverage next. Riders expect certain things from a Can-Am ATV. Groundbreaking technology, responsive handling, and the most power in every class. So why would they expect anything less from a Can-Am side-by-side? Introducing the Can-Am Commander, the most powerful rec utility side-by-side -side in the industry with precision handling and the first dual level cargo box. The facts say it's the most advanced side-by-side -side ever built, but the ride says it all. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am, by Amsoil, by DWT, and by Suzuki. Well, the pits are nearly empty at this round of the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Series. We're at the General GNCC in Georgia, and most of the fans are down at the start to watch our first UTV race of the year. We'll get it started with the Open Modified class. They go a battle into the first turn, and watch this. Wrath Racing here on the inside is going to take advantage of another machine getting up on two wheels, takes over the lead, and then some bumping and banging here in turn number two. It's going to allow William Yokely to slide his coastal drilling machine up into third, with Team Jacks excavating in fourth, and the race is on between those four machines into the woods. Then watch this. Team Say I Won't, they will get upside down in turn number one. That allows the other coastal drilling machine here in the open limited class to take over the lead. Again, in the limited division, only a few modifications are allowed, but because these stock commanders and razors are so darn quick, well, they're pretty capable and durable as well, as Team Say I Won't said, Say I Won't get back in the race, and I will get back in the race. And they're underway. Back in the woods, Rath Racing holding on with Daryl Rath, a veteran of ATV motocross and our utility machine racing, holding the wheel. And as you can see, these machines are truly capable in the rough stuff. With four-wheel drive, four-wheel independent suspension, big ground clearance, Traction and mobility are never an issue for these machines. The toughest part is finding racing lines and finding an opportunity to pass. But a lot of the drivers here are KG veterans. They're those who have one time raced motorcycles or ATVs in this series. They know the GNCC strategy game and don't think that on these early laps that they're not just gonna watch for spots that they can use later in the race to make passes. But you need to be careful on the opening lap. Get too far outside of that main race line and trouble is never far. Just keep on watching. This machine gets too far over the bank and goes up on its side. Now thanks to all the safety equipment, including a five point seatbelt harnesses, racing seats, and roll cages, driver and passenger are okay. And just to make sure our cameraman decides to pay them a visit. Hey, so what's it like to drive one of these? You know, it's really cool driving these things, you know, uh, based off my ATV, the history of the ATV racing, uh, you know, I, I knew a lot about how the uh, characteristics of the four-wheel machines handled, and uh, getting in these razors, it's, uh, it's a whole different mentality and aspect. It's, uh, it's really cool, it don't beat you up, especially with the, your exit shocks and, and the way this thing handles, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing, and especially when you got a, a co-pilot sitting there next to you, and you're just sitting there just freaking out laughing and everything and uh, you got a you got a machine that's 56 inches wide just railing through the trees it's uh it's quite a rush and uh i mean the tracks are you know there's tight sections and, and you know wide open sections but i tell you what once you get in those muddy sections 
I never knew how much I'd like to have four-wheel drive until now. Well, these single-seat Honda Pilots not only don't have four-wheel drive, but the splash protection not quite as good through the mud as well. Looks like a driver has his Razor flipped back onto four wheels and just going to try to work his way back onto the course. You saw one of the GNCC course marshals go by on a motorcycle to make sure everyone's okay. They're going to check their machine for damage and try to get back in the race. Consistency is a big issue when you're taking a big machine like this into a woods race. Team Rath Racing that just went by there had their troubles early, came back for a third place finish at this event in Georgia. Well, William Yokely came from as far back as eighth to drive his National Guard Polaris all the way up to the number one spot. Team Starrett Racing was out front early in this one, but unfortunately the last lap they ran into troubles and went all the way back to 12. Couple other machines battling it out here. You got Jeremy Dudding on the foremost insurance Warner Can Am at the number 51 of the aptly named Skid Row Racing. Nearly taking out one of our cameramen. Talk about consistency. Sometimes you tag trees, and when that happens, it's hard to get back going. And then you gotta plow through the mud and take advantage of your opportunities when you have them. Check out Team Nightcrawler Customs here trying to make moves, weaving through the trees. And then just bashing into each other. You got Dudding at the wheel of the 42 foremost Warner machine and Skid Row Racing, not afraid of each other at all. Through all the carnage, Yokely would drive his Polaris to the front. It's hard to pass on these machines, but when you go eighth to first, you're doing something right. Here is Team Nightcrawler Customs. They also worked their way through traffic and tried to keep Yokely in sight, kept him honest. A strong run for second. By the time we hit the field section for the last time, it was Yokely behind the wheel, making it happen just like you used to so many times on a four-wheeled ATV. Of course, it takes a lot of research and development to get to this point. Yokely's been racing this series since its inception, and they've learned a lot about how to set up a big UTV that's designed for work and for fun, turning it into a race machine. We will have more info on setting up UTVs for GNCC when we return to Racer TV. Current GNCC champion Josh Strang has one thing on his mind, winning. To get him over the finish line first, Josh uses the Suzuki RMZ450, a precision machine designed to leave the competition in the dust. With its potent fuel-injected four-stroke engine and race-developed chassis, the RMZ450 is the complete package that wins championships and collects number one plates. The RMZ450, it's why champions choose Suzuki. They win. Head down to your local Suzuki dealer today and see one in person. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am, by Amtoil, by DWT, and by Suzuki. We are in Union, South Carolina for our second round of the Grand National Cross Country Series UTV Tour for side-by-side -side machines. Fans are starting to leave the pit area again to head down and watch the start. Everything looks nice and shiny, and everyone's in a pretty good mood before they start busting their machines up and getting them all muddy on the trail. Off the start, Jeremy Dunning there, the number 42 Can-Am, almost jumps it. Has to roll back, opening the door for the number 67 of the Team Wrath Polaris on the inside. William Yokely on the Polaris National Guard machine to battle for. It's the 67 out front early. But it didn't last long. Wrath Racing Machine stalls on the inside. That opens the door for Yokely to drive his machine through. And Team Nightcrawler Customs and Team Forest Warner are right there behind him with the second coastal drilling machine coming from fourth. Wrath Racing picks it up at the number five spot. As you can see, totally different conditions here in South Carolina. We've still got some mud, but the leaves are starting to finally grow on the trees. Nightcrawler doing everything they can, a rough ride through this bumpy terrain, keeping Yokely honest out front. Working the way through the field, Yokely gives our cameraman the thumbs up. Max Roll is the man behind the wheel of the Nightcrawler Customs Machine, and he has got the hammer down, trying to run for the win today. You've also got Dudding here in the number three spot, trying to keep the leaders in check. Can-Am Commander is all new this year. We talked to Todd Sterner from Can-Am about setting it up. In the open modified class, we do race a stock motor. And most of the components are stock on the machine. Uh, we found it to be very durable. GNCC mandates that you have to run window nets 
Also, we've developed racing seats that are excellent for a consumer. They're comfortable, but they also offer excellent support. GNCC also mandates the use of a racing harness, which is pretty common in any of uh, automotive racing series. Some of the stuff that we do to make the machine race ready is we'll build our own front bumper. Radiator protection is a must. Uh, you're going through the trees, rocks, and once in a while you'll get in a little, little collision with other vehicles. We've also used, uh, we use a top on our machine helps protect from roost and also just keep the sun and out of the driver's eyes. We've chosen to use ITP tires. Um, we found in our testing they're the best tire out there uh, durability wise and also for traction. We run the DWT wheels. Uh, they do offer many different offsets. You can adjust your UTV's handling um, with those different wheels. Most racers will reinforce the roll cages uh, for safety reasons, GNCC racing is dangerous and the extremes that the drivers push them through uh, is a real test. Thanks Todd, that's right, like any form of motorsports, there can always be a danger in racing, but all the safety equipment that is required in these machines have led to an impeccable safety record in the three years that we've been racing UTVs in this series. Of course, the machines do break down on their own sometimes. Yes, the machines can get hurt, but we've always got the GNCC crew at the ready to get them out of the woods to their pits so they can get repaired. Don't worry, the sweep crew will make sure that no one gets left out of the woods. With all the potential things that can go wrong with your machine, you've really got to work hard in the garage to make sure all the bugs are worked out of your equipment. And that's what Yokely Racing has done so well. The years of experience they have from racing ATVs, they combined with three straight strong seasons here in the side-by-side -side machines and made them a top force in the UTV series. And William Yokely rolls to another win here in South Carolina, joined by Team Nightcrawler and Team Coastal Racing 2 up on the overall podium. That's the big buck. We're headed to Indiana next. Eddie Engine. Any season. At home. At the track. Or on the train. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Cast, beadlock, or spot, the DWT brand has always stood for one thing. Perfection. And now DWT means wheels and tires, including the new Moapa utility tires designed for work and play. Then check out DWT's awesome new Sector 3-piece wheel. Dent a rim? Just replace the outer wheel. Plus our full line of competition tires and wheels boxed to match how you race. DWT wheels and tires. Performance. Protection. Perfection. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am. By Amsoil by DWT, and by Suzuki. Today we're racing Grand National Cross Country in Indiana for the first ever Indy 100 event. And as you can see, the mud and the rain came down. You're defending ATV Series champion Chris Borich having his trouble just making it to the top of the hill. Brian Wolf would take the win. But here he is in the last corner. Barely even able to make a left just to get to the finish line. That's how treacherous the conditions have become here after a deluge came down. But that won't stop our UTD racers from going to battle anyway in the mud. Up the inside goes Team Hendershot Racing. Yokely leads them into the first turn. But Hendershot's gonna grab the lead, heading into turn two. We had so many entries in this one, we had to do multiple rows off the start and use adjusted time to determine a winner. Here is the 73 of Kyle Chaney taking the lead from row two of the open modified class. You'd be amazed how important goggles are in conditions like this. You'll see drivers actually pulling roll-offs or tear-offs off their lenses with one hand on the wheel. 
absolutely covered there is a roll at the wheel of the Nightcrawler machine. It's hard to tell who is who in these conditions, but luckily, each machine is equipped with a transponder, so the scoring works flawlessly, even if the driver and co-driver are completely covered in mud. This Indy 100 race was very difficult in the muddy conditions. It didn't get deep to the point where the machines were getting stuck, but the clay-like soil got very, very slippery. Luckily, a lot of the course was flat. Had we had, had a lot of elevation change, we might have had trouble. But then again, these ultimate terrain vehicles have proven they can handle just about anything we throw at them. Have a look. Once again, the temptation to find fresh lines leads to trouble. Watch the left. Up on the side it goes. Luckily, we were able to get a crew out there and get those guys back on four wheels and back in the race. Hendershot shot out of a cannon early in this one leading. Here's Yokely in hot pursuit and taking out a whole lot of roost in second place. The mud would eventually turn this race into a war of attrition. There you see some parts hanging off of that ride. Yokely was running third, and he ran into troubles of his own and would eventually finish the day in 18th, opening the door for Team North Carolina Power Sports to take the overall win. The first such victory for the Can-Am Commander, not bad for his first year of racing. Yokely's teammate Scott Kiger would put his Polaris up in second, and Team Hendershot would hold on for third. Everyone else, well, this one turned into a gruesome battle. You know how it is in racing, but a thrill of victory you must have, the agony of defeat. But being on four wheels or two, that's what the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Series is all about. It's rough, it's tough. When you're playing in the dirt, it's bound to be a good time. In its first three years of existence, the UTV series has proven that there is life after racing ATVs or motorcycles, and it might just be the most fun way to go racing of all. We expect great things in the future. We know this side-by-side -side series is here to stay. Thanks for joining us for a special edition of Racer TV. And if you've got a UTV sitting in your garage, bring it out, come race with us next year. We guarantee you, you'll have a good time. Thanks for watching.